we have to remember one thing, Chris, is that this is, you know, gold, gold and, and silver is important too, but gold is the anti-dollar. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics. And my good friend, Andrew McGuire, joining me again, uh, normally the first Tuesday of every month, although Andrew kindly was able to help out shift to this week, which I guess it really could not have worked out <laughs> better as I will attempt to demonstrate throughout this episode. Real quick, before we get started, today's episode is sponsored by Miles Franklin, who is offering a special, Andrew, uh, my friend Andy Sheckman, who runs Miles Franklin, got a special on the Silver Britannia that appears and then disappears when you have a background there. But for your native country, those are going to be $3.95 over spot. You can find out more about that at Arcadia at milesfranklin.com. And with that said, Andrew, sure is a pleasure to welcome you on in here. Uh, some history made since we last talked, and um, <laughs> we will have plenty to dig into, but more importantly, how are you doing? How's everything going with you today, sir? Nice to be with you, Chris, of course. Uh, yeah, no, great. I mean, um, things are going really well. Um, being, uh, we've opening up our new 7,000 square foot uh, vaulting facility in Liechtenstein now. Um, and I was just there three weeks ago. I mean, it's making it very difficult to travel at the moment with all these bloody lockdowns. And, um, but you know, there, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, but um, yeah, and I'll talk about perhaps, you know, because that is primarily, uh, we, t we take a lot of silver into this vault because uh, we, we actually ran out of, or run out of space for silver in yeah. our other vault in Liechtenstein. And uh, we had to open this one up. Um, and uh, we'll talk about, you know, how, how we, you know, when I was there, how we brought in 20 tons and, you know, basically the processes involved in that. But uh, and we'll also be shooting a video um, from right inside that vault we, where we will be walking around pallets acres yes. and pallets of silver um and uh and, and 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 really just doing something on you know here's a bar of gold here's i'm not going to lift up a thousand ounce bar in one hand but i mean but basically we'll say look look at the difference i mean a lot of people don't realize you know the value of this piece of gold the value of this thousand ounce bar, bar of silver and you suddenly it all comes into focus when you're physically handling this kind of stuff and you go my this is mind blowing. Um, in fact, you know, talking about silver, because I know that's, that's your baby, um, and, and mine too, of course, but, and ours, but essentially, um, you know, it's in, in, in the vaults, we some, we have some very, very, very wealthy people. And, um, and, and basically, yeah, there's thousand ounce bars there, which is great. They have gold, they have thousand ounce bars. But what is really interesting is that, and I want to, I'll film, I'll get this film, literally pallets of, of one ounce silver coins stacked right the way from floor to ceiling. And, you know, you say, well, why? I mean, but then you suddenly think, well, hold on a minute. This is smart. These are smart people. What are you going to do with a bar of gold, that, a kilo bar of gold that's maybe between 100 and 300 grand? What are you going to do with a, a one ounce silver coin that's maybe between you know, 150 and 200 bucks? I mean, it's fungible. You can use it. It is, you know, when we get some kind of a reset, when we get these, the, you know, the system's broken. You need these kind of, um, you need to get yourself ahead of the curve here. And I know a lot of people are stackers and you just held up a silver coin. That's a one ounce silver coin. Now, the perfect, that's the perfect fungible amount that you can use for transactions for, you know, so, so essentially you can't be lugging around a thousand ounce silver bar. I, um, I tried once. It was not easy. <laughs> it's it's pretty heavy, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so, Great for the triceps, though. If you want to do some curls, perhaps. But uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, so this is interesting because I'm you know this is what people are doing in the vault. This is what 
smart people are putting, and I'm not talking about people putting, you know, five, 10% of their money. I'm talking about some of these guys, and I'm talking about these, these some of these guys are billionaires, yeah. putting 90% of their assets into gold and silver, 90%, because they know. I mean, if, if the reason these people are wealthy and these people are accruing gold and silver is for the same reasons we are, they're just doing it on a bigger scale because they know what's coming down the pipe. And, and um, you know, we're very privileged to have shows like yours where people already know this. You know, we, 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 you know, we talk about this stuff. We, get, we drill down into the weeds sometimes, maybe too far sometimes, you know, but bottom line, this is a major reset that we're undergoing here. And so it's really interesting to, to um, you know, to look at this in, in, you know, from a physical market perspective, what people are really doing. And especially sometimes you've got that US centric kind of North America view. Uh, and then when we see such, it's said so different when we start to talk about old money. Um, you know, we're talking about people who are generations have castles in, on, the, on the Rhine, you know, we're talking about people who have, you know, hundreds of years of history. These are the people buying gold and silver because they understand they've been through it. They've, it's a 5,000 years of history that tells us this is what you need to have because every now and again, these fiat currencies blow up and 40 years is a pretty good run. Um, and God knows what they're going to do with the reset. Who knows? But, um, but essentially, we, yourself, people that watch, your, you watch Arcadia, uh, come to the interviews, come to the, uh, the webinars as well, come to the conferences, all positioning perfectly well. So kudos to everybody. And, um, but I think where we were, um, gosh, it's five weeks now. I can't believe it. We, on the 2nd of September, we looked at, we were starting to look at this counterintuitive. In fact, this was before the big smackdown on the 28th of September. And we looked at this counterintuitive action. And that was really, we, we just really reviewed the last two weeks of August. And I think the first two days of September from live. And I think we were looking at charts. We were looking at charts. But um, I mean, <clears throat> we looked at this divergent action. I mean, how evident this was to everyone. Um, but, well, <laughs> I'm going to say to everyone. It was evident to almost everyone, but um, but people, but the, uh, the the COMEX traders basically, and so um, so so we, what we lost, what people were losing sight of, was um, that these COMEX traders are the problems. These are the people that are trading. That this is probably the one percent that isn't pure algo fuel. Um, these guys are margin heavily, they come in and their stops are visible and they get rinsed. Um, and it was these speculative paper traders who actually provided the ignition fuel for officials who were really not ready for gold and silver to hit 2,535, uh, uh, the 2,500 gold and 3,500 revaluation trigger points that we've been discussing multiple times. I think your guests very much close in those areas to some 2,700. Maybe some people expect more than 35 before the reset. But, you know, we're talking about, this is where we were at the 2nd of September when we did the interview. Now, what I've been recently doing because of the change in behavior, I mean, we looked at the hermit so detailed over the last, over the many years, and it always was, there was a high percentage of high frequency stuff going on, maybe 70% at one point. You know what? Since March the 23rd, it's morphed into, I'd say, 99% algo-driven marketplace. And, and what it is, um, is the, there's a bunch of agnostic algos, which are really neutral, hunting for any correlation, no matter how disconnected from real supply demand fundamentals. And they, they've latched onto gold and silver because let's forget, don't forget that gold in the foreign exchange markets is actually the second largest foreign exchange cost after euro dollar. So 
you know, we're talking about something that's highly, highly liquid. But here's the issue I have. When you correlate something like the S&Ps, the ES contract, when you, when you correlate that with the tiny silver market, that's craziness. How can you possibly correlate? And, and yet we've seen these algos correlated uh, where we've seen, um, we've seen uh, uh, stocks come down, and silver come down. Uh, stocks go up, silver come up a bit. You know, but these correlations exist and you can see them, they shouldn't exist because what have they got to do with real fundamentals? What have they got to do with true supply and demand? But it's a paper marketplace. We've talked about it what, since 1974, this, this permit has been in place. Uh, what the reasons, so two reasons, one was to uh, create volatility and another was to, to swamp paper supply and control the price of gold. I think really all these neutral algos are trying to do um, is that they're trying to take a tick either side of generated volatility, but they're being led by structured high frequency trading programs that have captured them. And it's really important to understand that officials insiders have hijacked this 99% algo driven market and what they've done is, is, is to assist them in, in manipulating all of the key crosses. And the perfect example is today. So it's, look, it's really important to understand that officials and insiders have hijacked this 99% algo-driven market to assist in manipulating all the crosses. Now, the perfect example is today. And Chris, look at the chart there. You can see it. Pull, pull up a chart. And, and and look at what we're looking at here. And Andrew, I know you said that it seems a little odd that sometimes the markets are correlated in certain ways. And you know, I understand there's a you know there's similarity between gold and silver. Although we hear people even within the gold and silver community say how gold is money, silver doesn't follow it yet. I mean, there's gold, there's silver. You almost can't tell the difference between the two. And as you well know this is hardly the first time we've seen this. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is what perfect timing today uh, to look at this there. You know, as I say, lots of drama whenever we do anything, but the perfect example is today. And, and you've just shown what, what look at what ha what's happening. We're doing this interview on Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. And look, these footprints are so clear in both GC and SI, uh, where officials have stepped in uh, to directionally chart paint correlations to incentivize these neutral algos who really are agnostic to stampede into what is currently working, whatever that is. It doesn't matter what it is. They're just always hunting for some correlation. Uh, for the last few weeks, it has been to auto sell rallies in the downsloping 10 day moving average. And, and it's these 10 day moving averages that because they were starting to rise, have been come under attack today. And it's really that simple. I mean, you know what? <laughs> this counterintuitive action is really an attempt just to slow the ascent of this unstoppable revaluation in gold uh, versus the dollar and silver, of course, versus the dollar. But the consensus of some of the brightest minds in the industry is, and I'm talking about some of the largest trading houses that we affiliate with, 2,500 gold and $35 silver is still the current trigger point where gold and silver price revaluations have to be squared. And they are all long. These are, this is why it's amazing to see this kind of action because we know the big boys are long physical. Now, both gold and silver continue to be gamed right into where the final bottom was made. And if you remember, this was on the 28th of September, and gold bottomed at 1851.10 and silver at 21.810. And I'm talking about futures here. Yeah. But as I made public at the time, this deeply oversold bottom had carved out a significantly higher stair step, which is 400 bucks higher in gold than March the 23rd bottom and 10 bucks higher in silver regardless of what's going on today, those are safe. That's a safe, very short-term 
uh, uh, situation we're seeing today, but it's a safe, these are safe anchors and, and that we saw on the 28th. Now, look, we know what the big boys are doing. They're certainly going very, very long. Um, look, so very short term intraday gaming aside, these stair steps look absolutely very solid. And from a wholesale market perspective, they're solid enough to propel gold and silver through into these reset points that we've just discussed. But look, let's fast forward to, to now. Now, a step through the footprints is really warranted here because, and I know a lot of people say, well, you know, perhaps we, we just want to look at the bigger view, but you need to sometimes dig down and see what's going on. Um, and, and I think it's warranted to dig down a bit. Um, and because we saw, um, we, we're going to expect gold, a big gold and silver rally. And if you remember, if you go back to last Thursday, this rally commenced right on cue. Well, in fact, when China returned last Friday. So essentially we saw some short covering ahead of, uh, ahead of the Friday open. Um, and we saw that, that, that rising, we saw Friday, um, the, the price rise, the gold price and the silver price rise. And it was just before China came back from an extended eight day holiday. Now, <laughs> no surprise there, uh, netted out for some residual cell side algo muscle memory, because after all, these guys have now been in an eight week sell off. So the muscle memory is such that you just keep selling the rally, sell the rally, sell the rally. But suddenly the footprints evidence a wholesale market uh, seeing a very bullish change in behavior. And this bullish change in behavior is what the officials are trying to chart paint today because muscle memory said sell. Then we suddenly have three days above the 10 day moving averages and these algos, in simple terms, are educated to buy the dip above the tens. Unfortunately, it's that simple. The more financially educated you are, the less sense this bloody makes. Now, this is a mindless world of a 99% algo-driven siloed comics casino. Look, correlations work until they do not, after which fresh correlations are hunted out. So this is what we're seeing today. And today's counterintuitive sell-off has really, you look at it, it's barely moved the needle on risk assets. And if you look at the chart for, for, for gold, look at the chart for silver, and you look at the, the small move in risk on assets in ES, I mean, this sell-off began on no news following a very benign CPI number today. And it really, we evidenced a directionally instigated algo ex induced exchange of well over 375 tons of GC positions in less than two hours. Now, where the hell did that come from? Absolutely counterintuitive to everything else that's going on. Now, now this was affirmed um, after we spoke to several desks today, just before we came on this interview, the only trading entity that would risk such a large dump of GC contracts that clearly exceeded intraday position limits would have been a Fed agent bank with a free pass. There is nothing else that would make sense. Uh, and the sole reason a directional dump of such a large tranche of GC lots to hit the market at market, not even, not even seeking a, a good price, it was just literally to trick back in the heart, the, you know, the herd of, of, of algos who had just witnessed positioning long above the 10 day moving average. As you say, buy the, it's either a sell the rally or buy the dip mantra. It's as simple as that. Now that's how simple this market's become. Now, obviously it's not always as simple as the 10 day moving average, but in this instance, it is that simple. So what's this all about? It really actually is an attempt to shake out the October longs. And I'm talking about gold here because silver really didn't stand. There was very little October action in silver. But in October, we saw an unprecedented large size of deliveries of exercises from options seeking delivery. And that was interesting because we also know of one large house 
that said, well, you know what, can't get my bullion anywhere else, let's go there. Let's, let's buy these contracts. Now, this is most unusual um, because historically, October is it's, it's a non-event and really the COMEX has always been viewed as an undeliverable market. Now, that's why we've been watching this contract closely. And I'm sure a lot of people that, that are listening have as well. Now, the unprecedented number of options exercise that chose to roll into this expiring contract had us on high, high, high alert. And as of yesterday, over 30,000 lots have been stood for delivery with another 4,000 lots still sitting in the October contract standing for delivery, indicating that over 107 tons, physical tons, are going to be removed from the undeliverable casino. Well, it's not so easy. The lack of corresponding COMEX deliveries into such strong physical demand, it really raises, as a wholesaler, raises immediate questions. Look, we're 13 days into the delivery process, and only a fraction of these October deliveries are physically flowing out as deliveries. Now, in this smoke and mirrors world of the casino, not all deliveries are expected to exit. But the main question is, if you or I have a delivery obligation and we sit with this bullying in a COMEX vault, why would it take so long for us to discharge the collateral costs of holding and storing and insuring this bullion if we're ready to sell it? Now, these costs aggregate to around 80 cents an ounce in total to date. And if we look at that on paper, that's about 2.5 million in costs. Now, all these carry costs could be eliminated if the deliveries were discharged promptly. So, major red flag. There's only one plausible reason the positions are either naked short or it's just a shuffle between house accounts to buy back bullion after an eight week rig sell off, which I think is part of it. However, there's some unwanted competition and, and such an imbalanced paper to physical condition has to be, uh, it's, it hasn't been evidenced since, as we said, March the 23rd, when you just basically, we just looked at those bottoms. And although no drama is evident in the EFP conduit this time, which is really what broke the market last time, in the scramble to restore, restore credibility, the COMEX has set itself up as a physical delivery market. And the consequence of that is, <laughs> hasn't been realized yet. This is, this, is an equally, this is equally, if not more bullish condition than we evidenced in March when we made those lows that we just looked at. So what's happened is the COMEX, which is this market that was set up to, to really contain the price of gold has unwittingly put itself in the crosshairs as a delivery market. And this was never ever envisaged. And with bullion difficult to obtain elsewhere in size at the paper induced prices that we're seeing, we see these prices come out essentially saying, here it is for delivery, but it isn't there to deliver. So, you know, what this has done is that when people come in and demand the bullion, at these paper induced prices, it catches the orchestrators offside into a technical and fundamental oversold condition, which really historically could have been squared by adding sufficient paper supply, but not in a physically delivered contract. And this is the point. I think you can do it in almost anything else, but this is an actual physically delivered contract. And so you've made yourself, you bring, you bring the bullion in to restore credibility, and all of a sudden you're in the crosshairs for delivery. Go figure. Um, and we've seen these attempts to dislodge these, this, this October delivery um, uh, situation is, an, is a good example. Um, and we see these orders standing for delivery as real competing global delivery demands, demands that are professionally hedged. So it can't be shaken out. And usually we see this kind of volatility is, you see a lot of, a lot of contracts standing for delivery create enough of a shakeout, they will disappear. They'll just cash out. Look, it's way below where I bought it. I, I, let's, just, let's just figure out another day, another, another dime, another day. Well, not in this case. These are professionally purchased and they are professionally hedged. It's just a question of where can I get my bullion? 
And I, I ask you, and I, and I ask you right now, can you buy bullion at spot? Can you buy silver at spot? Can you buy gold at spot? No, uh, no one I know of can get anything at spot. I mean, uh, you know, and it, <laughs> they can't. And I and I I get what you're saying, and uh, makes a lot of sense. And I think that's why I appreciate you coming on here each month because I think people are looking for answers to things like this. And Andrew, actually, I have a question on something you said in there. <clears throat> You talked a bit about correlations and certainly something that I know is on people's minds, especially yeah. because you've seen this up close. Again, I get it that gold and silver would be correlated. That makes sense to me. Although I also noticed that a large portion of the investment world seems to find a big difference between the two. So the fact that, again, we always see these in lockstep. Is there also perhaps a correlation between that and the JP Morgan, a $920 million fine. Now, Andrew, believe it or not, we have some critics out there. I know you're going to be shocked. Uh, and I've had a couple people, even since this came out, saying, oh, well, that shows they were spoofing, not that they were suppressing the price. You know, I think we, we in the, the Big Silver Short book and elsewhere, your podcast, the appearances you've had on my show, I think we've laid out a lot of evidence that would discredit that, but I'm gonna play something that Bart said. I may have played it for you before. I know some people have heard it before. Hopefully you can bear with me. I think it'll be great to get your comment because again, let's just stick with spoofing for a second. I'm wondering if this is a spoof because here you can hear what Bart Chilton said. And actually this one is so special Look at what happens right here at the $25 level where it's kind of hovering around right before it drops. So imagine when I ask Bart the question, I say $20 because it was a couple of years ago, but just imagine 25 instead of 20. And then Andrew, perhaps you can give us your thought on. Again, I appreciate you mentioning the spoofing. Curious uh, because uh, my understanding of what, how some of the manipulation has occurred is that you know if silver is trading twenty dollars and five cents? There's a lot of stop orders placed around the twenty dollar handle. So often, if the price can get pushed a little bit, then you get a lot of those high frequency algorithms kicking in, and then you'll see a drop with many feeling that people kind of nudging a little are then able to buy lower. Does that right. sound like a reasonably accurate portrayal to put it in perspective to folks or would you phrase it differently well it's a, it's a good portray it's a good portrayal but it's actually it's a very good portrayal and then andrew e talks gives some uh, mechanics for about three minutes before he concludes with he's in nanoseconds so uh the difference in your description is that today when a market moves because of a spoof, it can move a lot more. Andrew, is this a spoof? You know what? Why would it not be? Now, the thing is, is that, um, I mean, it's just one tool in the toolbox. Obviously, you know, rigging a price to a certain price level requires an ignition point. And you can't create an ignition point without a spoof. And however we, we, you can call it whatever you want, uh, but, but it is a spoof. And, and so basically, yes. So we had um, banks doing this for their own book. I think what we're now seeing, Chris, is the, 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 the it may even be the same bank because that same bank is uh, an agent for the Fed and acts as a primary dealer for the Fed. And the Fed can trade in the market and do what it wants, when it wants, with no accountability. So yes, I think that it has not stopped. I think uh, what you've just illustrated, what, what else can it be? Of course it is. And because it comes from no news. It comes at a point where there's an inflection point. 
uh, it comes when a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of gaming, i.e., throwing a few bids in and out and uh, and, and playing that spoofing game, can confuse this ninety nine percent algo driven market and it's exactly what we're talking about here whereas before it was an individual bank profiting greatly and they got caught they got jp morgan being fined deutsche bank be fined i mean we've seen <laughs> scotia bank being fined we, we've seen there's multiple more people's being being fined and and they're saying yeah well it's it's just spoofing 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 is just a tool to get to achieve an, an objective um obviously you don't spoof to make a tick either side. And what we're seeing now, whereas before we saw an individual bank doing it, now we're seeing officials do it. And I think what you're doing is because it's so easy to, because it's such a 99% algo driven market, just as we've described, you need, you, all you need is control of an HFT, something that is big enough, where you're powerful enough, you're not accountable to anyone, you can then steer, lead them these, these algos by the nose, create correlations that shouldn't exist, and literally then you can pull a spoof and get them to do exactly what you want, which is exactly what we've seen today. And you look at that chart right now, that is 100% algo driven, but it's not neutral algos. This is neutral algos that have been dragged by the nose to do something in the form of a spoof to instigate it. So I, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, although if I may be bold enough as to dispute one point that you said in there, Andrew, you said there was no news, which, um, well, technically we had the news stock slip as traders eye stimulus. So there was actually, I mean, I don't know if we could call that news, but if you actually look, the, every anytime I see this, I look at CNBC, what are they talking about? Here they're talking about more money printing um, we can take a look at the Dow Jones. What did that do today? Uh, you know, doesn't quite look like the silver market. So mm -hmm. if there's any news, uh, there you go. So I guess that's my similar point where, you know, it's great they find these guys, but here, you know, a couple of weeks after the fine, um, you know, and I guess the way I see it is that either A, yes, it's a, what sure it seems like what Bart and you both described as a spoof. But if not, if that if this isn't spoofing, I guess that was my issue all along with the investigation where, I don't know, I think there's a lot of people who can't explain this otherwise. Yet, if you look at the chart where you see the volume, uh, I don't have it pulled up yet. Maybe I can do that while you answer the next question. Um, but I mean, you always see a massive spike in the volume, whatever that is. Um, and I agree that some people say, well, you know, the market can be spoofed in both directions. It can be manipulated in both directions. I would agree with that. But I mean, here we look at gold, September 6th, 2011, the night, as I'm sure you will remember, that after the US was downgraded by S&P after the debt ceiling was blown through. <laughs> and Andrew, I'm sure you're, by the way, you're expecting a lot of debt ceiling questions in the next US presidential debate. So hopefully we'll get some clarity on that soon. But here it was, US yeah. going off the tracks. Swiss, I think it was probably around, uh, let's say two or 3 a.m. announced that they're gonna peg they're frank to the euro, but this is back in 2011, and you see what looks like a spoof there, what looks, I don't know what this is here, but, so I mean, whether people say it's suppressed or manipulated, uh, my core thesis, which it sounds like is sim quite similar, if not exactly the same as yours, that when you have unlimited amounts of paper that you can drive the price down or up, but, you know, I wonder what people are supposed to think when they see that announcement, but they see this again. I mean, what, you know, what, what are they supposed to think? Well, I mean, as you say, <laughs> but you have to look at the, you have to look at the, the velocity behind some of these, these moves. Um, it's, it's more than, I think, as you say, spoof is, is the trigger. And, and um, that's, that's really just one of the tools, but you have an objective in mind, mind as well. 
and and really all you have to do is lead lead a stampede get the herd stampeding and you can actually start taking the other side of that trade once you've pulled and of course that's what that's what the spoofing has been all about and you know so i think we have to remember one thing chris is that this is you know gold gold and, and silver is important too but gold is the anti-dollar so essentially why would they we why would we not see officials moving into uh, gold and and making against the dollar and literally gaming that through spoofing i mean spoofing is a great tool and you're immune from prosecution now you may use an agent bank like jp morgan as a primary dealer to do your work for you but they're sanctioned so and are they benefiting from the physical side of that are they benefiting uh, as a bank personally well i think so so i think it's important to remember that uh, it's i don't think it's the bank i don't think under regulatory scrutiny right now i think you'd be kamikaze to attempt as a bank to attempt to start spoofing i think this is a hundred percent official and these are official footprints uh, on on a on really uh, on a cross that is so important to the Fed. So that is part one of this month's interview with Andrew McGuire. Again, this episode was kindly sponsored by Miles Franklin that buys and sells gold, silver, platinum, palladium. If you'd like to take advantage of their special of three ninety five over spot on silver Britannias, you can email Arcadia at milesfranklin.com. And with that said. I will see you tomorrow night for part two.